Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Tuesday, July 23rd. We'd like to wish a happy birthday to Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> happy 30th birthday, <laughs> sir. And I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. I'm Beth Stevens. And we are joined here in the studio by Eric King. Hello, everyone. And we have a fantastic guest with us. We have Christina Alabato, a.k.a. Gretchen Wieners of From Mean, mean Girls. Girls. Yes. yes. Very excited to chat we with her. We love our Mean Girls. We do. We absolutely love them over here. Uh, very excited to chat with her. But first, Beth and I are going to talk about today's top five. This cast is going to be simply the best. Very convincing, well, Eric. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> No, actually, I really am excited because we have additional casting for Tina, the yes. Tina Turner musical. I, you know why Christine's celebrating over there? She's <laughs> her so hubby. <laughs> happy. So we knew Adrian Warren was playing Tina. We of knew Adrian yes, Warren I mean, was playing Tina. Yeah. But now we have the rest of the cast. Daniel J. Watts will be playing Ike Turner. Don Lewis will play Zelma Myra, Lucretia Taylor, um, as Grand Georgiana. Hmm. And this is interesting. Nikeki. Uh, Obi Malekwe, who's playing Tina in the West End, will play the role of Tina at certain, certain performances, performances on the Broadway. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tina features a book by Katori Hall, direction by Philida Lloyd, and choreography by Anthony Von Last. I can't wait for this show. I I'm saw so it in London. That's Adrian right. Warren, uh, powerhouse, yeah. powerhouse. Yeah. Begins previews October 12th, set to open on November 7th at the Lund Fontaine Theater. Can't wait. And we got the trailer for this Oscar Buzzy biopic. Yes, we have known Cynthia Erivo is playing Harriet Tubman in the film Harriet for a while, and we finally got our first trailer for the movie this app this morning. Um, it was newly released from Focus Features, and of course it also stars Tony Award winner Leslie Odom Jr., and Janelle Monet is in that cast as well. Um, you can check out the trailer on our site right now. Harriet will arrive in cinemas on November 1st, which is of course right in the midst of awards. That's when you know, all the awards movies all get, the buzzy get all the movies. buzzy movies. Um, Cynthia Revo is taking over the screen. When she's at, El at Bad Times at El she's Royale. She's taking over the world. But was, she's got like, if you could look her up on IMDb, she's got like five projects in post production she's right busy now. Busy lady. It's absolutely crazy. Um, but can't wait to see that. Check out the trailer. Um, I think it's going to be big. I think Oscar nomination. I'm going to say it right here. Wow. On Live at Five, July Prediction. 23rd. Yes, Oscar nomination for Cynthia Revo. <laughs> You'll love to see it. Get that EGOT. <laughs> <laughs> and the ladies improving and moving on. Oh, oh still my heart. Eric. <laughs> God. Okay, well, let me tell you about a reading that's happening with a really cool cast. Beth Lovell, yes. currently in the prom, and Bobby Conte Thornton, who currently we all in know. Our hearts. Yeah. <laughs> currently in our hearts. <laughs> now in forever. Uh, who is uh, well known for a Bronx tale, mm -hmm. are going to start a reading as mother and son in a play called Conversations with Mother. Ooh. I like to say it like yes. that. Yes. <laughs> With mother. Um, it's a two-person play by Matthew Lombardo, who wrote T at Five. Mm. And what can I tell you about it? It will be directed by Noah Himmelstein, and it will take place on September 12th. Here's what it's about. Are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, Bobby will play Bobby Calavecchio, son to Level's title character. I already told you they're mother and son. Mm -hmm. In a work that spans over five decades, there will be aging. There oh, will be yes. younger versions, older ver I don't know what it's about, but it sounds cool. It I sounds like the name. great. Yeah, and I mean those two. Those sure. two. And the first replacements in these roles are definitely going to need a map. Yes, there will be a... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, okay. like, it took a second. He's and then, too yes, clever no, for us. I amazing. It just uh, <laughs> Cynthia and Larry Murphy. Of course, they are the parents. Of Dear Evan Hansen. Currently, right now, they are played by Jennifer Laura Thompson and Michael Park. And soon, Anne Sanders and Ivan Hernandez will be taking over those roles. Beginning August sixth, Michael Park and Jennifer Laura Thompson will play their final performances at the Music Box Theater on August fourth. Original cast members. Original cast members. Yes, they've been doing it for a long time. Oh, yeah. Poor Jennifer Laura. Thompson must just be dry from all the crying that she has to she, do, she, you know? She My has goodness. an emotional She needs to replenish, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sanders has been seen on Broadway in Frozen, The King and I, If Then, Leap of Faith, Avenue Q, and A Beauty and the Beast. And Hernandez was seen on Broadway in Chicago and Off-Broadway in Into the Woods, Yank, and The Fantastics. Also, on July 30th, coming up, Gabrielle Caruba will be taking over the role of Zoe Murphy, their daughter, um, from Mallory Bechtel, who will play her final performance on July 28th. Lots of changes over there at Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. But still fantastic. Good show. stuff. Yeah. And we now have dueling East Coast, West Coast revivals of this musical. 
Okay, first of all, it's not a competition, Eric. It's Dueling. Not a co- <laughs> it's not a competition. Dueling. You have to choose a side. <laughs> Yesterday we told you about Little Shop of Horrors is starry cast off yes. Broadway Tammy, with Tammy Jonathan Blanchard. Groff, John Tammy Blanchard Groff. and Christian Borle. Can't wait. Now the West Coast has some. It's getting the last yeah. word in. Okay. Yeah. This. Are you ready? I'm feeling I, a little. I'm, I'm still. I'm a little excited. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> George Salazar, mm-hmm. M. J. Rodriguez, and Amber Riley will star in Little Shop of Horrors at Pasadena Playhouse. Yeah. Powerhouses. So we are going to have to. Take flight yes. to the West Coast yeah. to see them. You know, both. the cast should take the flights. They should just switch. Wow, you yeah. just blew you know? my mind. Yeah, that so would be George nice. will star as Seymour. MJ will star as Audrey, and Amber Riley will star as Audrey, too. Absolutely. Of course, the production will run from September seventeenth through October twentieth. Amazing casting. Yeah, so incredible. First of all, I can't get any Little Shop songs out of my head anyway. No, I know it's been two and now full days of yes. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Bob Shubop. Go see it. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Beth, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Eric, would you tell us a little bit about today's Fetch guest? I would love to. Okay. Christina Alabato stepped into the hit Broadway adaptation of Mean Girls back in March, replacing Ashley Park as one-third of the plastics, Gretchen Wieners. She has previously been spotted on Broadway in American Psycho and American Idiot, as well as the national tours of Evita and Spring Awakening. Follow her on social media at Christina Alabato and leave all your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Christina and Ryan. Hello, Christina. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. We're so happy to have you. Thanks for coming to Live at Five. I just learned so much about Did musical you? theater. Was, was the news in, the informative news was very you? informative. You were also a very good audience member I to was. have. I like really you were celebrating <laughs> the things that you were excited about. Um, how are things over at the August Wilson Theater? I was there not too, too long ago seeing the show again. Yay. You're absolutely fantastic in the show. I also Thank got you. to see Renee Rapp, who's in the show for a little bit. My She'll heart. be coming back, of course. Yes. Um, but yeah, how are things over there? Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. I'm obsessed with being Gretchen Wieners. It's been like four months Four for months, you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like nice and subtle. Mm-hmm. I like, feel like now I know what I'm doing. Sure. Um, and it's just the greatest place to work. I love everyone at the theater. I love just the show in general. It's so mm-hmm. fun to do something fun and funny and make people laugh, yeah. but then still get to drop into the heart of Gretchen's deep, deep soul. Absolutely. Um, and it's just the greatest. I love it. I have so much fun over there. And the fans love it. The fandom of Mean Girls is crazy. They I are mean, they, so awesome. They are. They are. They They're really fantastic. Are. From seeing it in previews, the reactions that you get now are the same. People are still just going nuts for it. Yeah. What What have your interactions with fans have been? It's been really cool to like um, join and feel so welcomed not only obviously by the company and everyone over there at Mean Girls, but by the fans. They're yeah. so awesome and love the show so much and I feel super supported as an actor with them and we're real they're really engaged on social media and on Twitter and Instagram and at the stage door and I love you all so keep <laughs> keep doing it because it's it's just really fun to feel that a show like this can connect with audiences and kids everywhere absolutely um, and not only kids but people that loved the movie like I did so much when I was right. younger. I was going to say, so you must have been already a familiar and a fan of... Yes. So was meeting Tina Fey a moment for you? Was it, was, that- it was definitely a moment. <laughs> it was like before my final callback, I was like, girl, get it together. I mean, Calm I've been down. such a huge fan of hers, not right. only as a comedian and actor, but also as just a person. Yeah. I think that everything, Such a gosh, and, she's yeah. incredible. So to get to meet her and act for her, I mean, I was like, okay, it doesn't matter what happens. <laughs> like this is such a cool moment for me. And not only her, but Jeff and Casey, Casey obviously. And yeah. just the whole team was so um, inspiring to me. And so it was really cool to be in the room with them. But I definitely had to like check my nerves. <laughs> Though in this instance, it kind of worked because Gretchen's super right. nervous. I mean, so yeah, I was like, I'm going to use this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of Gretchen Wieners, what do you, uh, what's something that you admire most about her? Having to to get to know her a little bit, um, playing her for four months. What's something that you've grown to appreciate and admire about this this young woman? You know, sometimes Gretchen reminds me of me um, when mm. I was younger. Just the idea that, like, she, she tries so hard, but, like... And yes, she's extra because she's Gretchen. Right. But <laughs> but the idea of like really wanting people to appreciate you for you. Mm-hmm. And the, I always say this in interviews that I w- wish I could tell my high school self that I was enough. And that is what I wish I could tell Gretchen every night. Yeah. And she gets so <laughs> close to having realizations right. that she's not quite there yet. Um, but I love that most about her. And that in the show, what's beautifully written, why Gretchen is so beautifully written in the musical is that you actually get to see glimpses of her depth mm-hmm. and her vulnerability. For sure. And I think that's why I have such good conversations with young people about how they connect with Gretchen and yeah. how at school they sometimes feel like that and um, that the show helps them feel better yeah. and 
make th- makes them think like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good the way I am. That's which, great. Yeah, that's really special. I think we can all take that. From, Absolutely. From <laughs> Were you um you grew up in Phoenix, mm-hmm. Arizona? Was social media what it was for you in high school the way it is now? Um, and do, do you think you would have survived it if it was quite? Yeah, oh my God. I just couldn't imagine. I, being... I really can't imagine it. You know, I, I did not have social media. I, I got a phone, got it, I don't know, a, an emergency phone in sixth sure. grade. Sure. Oh, me too. And yeah, then, right. And then yeah. in high school, I was allowed to text like five texts a day, mm-hmm. like maybe before we went over. And I was, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Absolutely. And so I didn't have that experience, but I can imagine that it's a complicated place to be growing yeah. up right now. And I, I, I do urge people and, and young people to. To, it is easy to measure your self worth by likes and by people that follow you and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And even for us in the business, you're like, "Am I moving forward?" But it's just not about that. It just yeah. really isn't. And it can be a really fun place to connect as human beings, I think. But it shouldn't. I always like hope that people know it's really not about status. I, I don't see it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can imagine it's difficult as a young person. I experienced a little social media on the Spring Awakening tour. That was the first sure. time that it started. Right, because um, you were only 18, right? I was 18 right? on you? that tour. Yeah. And Instagram wasn't a thing yet, but um, like the Guilty Ones, which was the fan base at that time. Sure. Um, it was like forums and stuff, but they were all so supportive and wonderful and awesome. So it's been interesting to watch social media change so much, not only for us as people, but the Broadway community, yeah. it's really cool. It, it's a gr- it can be a great tool. It just, I see it more as a tool than like um, a way of feeling, you know what I mean? Connected. Like, yeah, yes. Right. And yeah. I think that's important. I think Absolutely. the real human connections sure. are better. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, was was uh, music, drama, were those, um, were those communities you found while you were in high school? Is this something you knew you wanted to do for a long time? Yeah. I felt, you know, I was not in the popular group in in high school I moved high schools in the middle and I really found my way through it Mm -hmm. in music choir band all that stuff I fit in that way and I just feel like it's funny I don't feel like I even necessarily said this is what I'm doing it just happened Mm -hmm. like I didn't want to do anything else I didn't want to go to school for anything else so it, it kind of worked out perfectly and then spring awakening fell into my lap which was such a cool thing to happen at 18. Right. Um, and then it kind of just kept flying from there. Yeah. What was the experience of, to be 18, to be traveling across the country in a show that people were bananas, bananas. about? How was that? Do, do, do you think that prepared you and really kind of solidified that if you if I can handle this, then this is something that I definitely want to make, like a, give it a shot. Make definitely. It a out of it. Yeah. When people ask me where I went to college, I say I went to Spring Awakening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. Because it did. It helped. I was a swing and in the on stage ensemble. And so I got to learn a lot, like about that. Mm-hmm. And then I also, you know, with, like you said, with the fans and the different... It was an interesting way, interesting introduction into this business because it was so specific. Spring Awakening was insane. Yeah, it was nuts. Everything about it, especially at that time, like, I, you know, it was my first tour and we landed in San Diego, I'll never forget this, and there were hundreds of people with signs and things at baggage claim, which just doesn't happen on tours. My tours after that, that did not ever happen again. So it was a weird way of starting this. Um, But... It, it taught me so much. And then definitely doing it, I was like, oh, this is what I should be doing. Mm-hmm. I soaked it up like a sponge. I got to the city. I went into every class I could get into. Because yeah. I was always also like, I'm only 20 when I got off the tour. I don't know what I'm doing yet. So, so <laughs> right. let's learn. Let's figure this out. I yeah. was one of those younger people. And you've been a part of so many, so many cool projects. I mean, include, so you, uh, American Idiot, of course, then American Psycho. Um, but you also participated in Lazarus yeah. off-Broadway, which is something you were part of from the very beginning you got to work with David Bowie yes. before we sadly lost him what was that experience like for you I can imagine as somebody like the, into music that must have just been life changing yeah it's been cool the way that my career has gone I've gotten to work with a lot of music people a lot yeah. of rock, rock right. people yeah, and, no, of and pop people um, and working with David Bowie was I mean something I still can't really fathom that Mm, I got to do that and work with him and you know in the process between the reading and actually the production we did some work with demos and things and I really got to work closely with him and it's something that I still again it's it seems strange to say that he was one of the kindest people and so humble for being Mm -hmm. David Bowie yeah and um 
And just to be able to be a part of that project was something I will never, ever forget because right. it meant so much to him, like so much. And we got to do the cast recording, which was really cool. And yeah. we recorded it on the day of his death, which is, oh, if you listen right. to that yeah. album, it's it's fascinating. But one of the reasons he wanted it to be recorded by the Off-Broadway cast is he says one of the things he listened to the most in his life was the Off-Broadway cast recording of Hair. Wow. And he said it was no because way. it was the original people, the, and he was like, "That's what I want for mm-hmm. my for this musical for me." That's incredible. Um, I always liked that that he yeah. liked that cast recording. No way. Right. And you have been. Um, I want to open up to some questions of the yeah. people that are watching as well. But before we do, you've been so open about as a person of color and being in this industry and in an industry that you know is, is you feel like it's constantly trying to be a little bit better about representing people of color and their stories. How how has that experience been for you to navigate? Yeah. And you, you know, where do you hope the industry continues to go? Absolutely. I mean, so I've been doing this now for eleven years almost, and it has changed. I feel it. Mm-hmm. I feel that the uh, the opportunities that I get, even being able to play. Gretchen Wieners. I feel like 10 years ago possibly that that maybe would have been different. But a lot of things that have come into my lab, a lot of auditions that I've gotten, it has changed. And I believe we are really moving in the right direction where it's not only telling the stories of people of color, which are so important, Mm -hmm. but it's also allowing us to play every role, any role. It doesn't have to be about my Latina Middle Eastern background that makes Mm -hmm. me my story told. It can also be that I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. And, And all of that is part of my story, but that I can also just play Gretchen Wieners or just yeah. play Evan Hansen or just play these other every Absolutely. man roles, every woman roles. So I do feel like it is moving forward and I'm proud to be part of it and I, I hope that we continue. Um, yeah. It just being a colorful, wonderful Beautifully put. Place, yeah. I also found out a quick, uh, a quick little fun. You were you got married in Sedona, Arizona, right? I did. And Roxy Hart, Desi Oakley, yes. officiated your wedding. <laughs> she so, did. That's incredible. I, I, yeah. Have you two been best friends for a long time? She is that's... one of my besties. She was one of my Avidas on the Avida tour. It was oh, her and Caroline Bowman, and right. I was the mistress. And um, we got so close. And she was one of the people that was right there with me when I first started dating my now husband Robert mm-hmm. Lindsay. Who's gonna do Tina Turner? <laughs> yes, yes. That was um, <laughs> exciting day for our family. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so Desi came and officiated, that's inc- and, and she was right in the midst of waitress she, for her, right? You like, guys, Desi Oakley. <laughs> is a freaking <laughs> rock star. Let's just give her a fan friend I, moment. I, honestly, <laughs> she finished rehearsals, got on a plane, drove from Phoenix to Sedona in the middle oh. of the night, went to sleep, woke up, officiated our wedding, danced the night away, woke up, went back on a plane, got into rehearsals. Wow. Wow. It was that's, mind blowing. That's how you pick friends. I was right? like, Desi, <laughs> don't do it. We can find someone else. She was like, I'm doing it. That's amazing. amazing. Way to go, Desi. Yay, Desi. <laughs> yeah. uh, and like, congratulations on being married. Okay. But of course, yes. Uh, what would our viewers and fans like to know from Christina? Okay, so Juliana would like to know. I like this question. I don't think I've seen this question before. If you could have any job in theater besides performing, what would you want to do? Oh, that is a good question. I was talking about this on a live. I did a Q&A this week, and someone was asking, what else can I do if I love musical theater but I can't act or sing? Mm. There are so many incredible jobs. I mean, something like this. You're such a part of the community, you know, not necessarily being an actor. I think I I would be... God, that's so hard. Part of me is like maybe a stage manager because I'm good at organizing things. Sure, yeah. God, stage managers, the amount of that work is, that they that do. Is, I, it's a brutal it gig. Is it is unbelievable. A brutal gig. And I don't think I could call the show. I don't think I'd be very good at that. So maybe not a stage manager. But maybe something in like the... I like the idea of this kind of stuff, like mm-hmm. the the meeting people. Yeah, the, it's a lot of fun. Just the social part of all of it and getting to know and, and allowing all the people to see everything. Certainly. Yeah, something like that. um, You playing Gretchen Wieners, that was your first time uh, replacing in a principal role, right? Is there something, was there a new lesson or something you learned about that process that you you hadn't known before or just something that occurred to you? Yeah, you know, I had replaced before a very different context in the ensemble. It was very, very high stress, actually. This Mm. was a little chiller for me. Oh, interesting. I had a little more time and I think the American Idiot Ensemble was insane so it was very hard it was an intense learn for me and this was too but I kind of knew coming in I wanted to be off book I wanted to know the music Mm. I wanted to be feel like it was a smooth process yeah and honestly what I learned is that the mean girls like people that put me in are unbelievable they were so good to me and let me do my thing and taught me slow enough to feel good but fast enough to feel like I was ready right yeah yeah. um so I think I learned that I'm obsessed with all of them over there but (laughs) but and that you can do it yes I think that's what it is really is that I felt ready to do this Mm -hmm. and I was and that felt really really good as an actor that's been like 
going, Absolutely. going, going. Yeah. So that was cool for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, Lindsay would like to know, what can you tell us about the Devil Wears Prada musical? Oh my gosh, Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> um, Devil Wears Prada was really fun. Again, it was, you know, I, uh, people keep asking me about this. It's interesting, and in I did that reading, but I, who knows if I'll ever get to do it again. That's mm. one of the funny and most interesting things about what we do is that I got to be a piece of that. Right. But who knows if I'll ever do it again. But with or without me doing it again, it's going to be awesome. That's yeah. all I'll say about it. Yeah. You're, 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 it's going to be great. It is going, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's Devil Wears Prada. How can it not right, be great? Right. So we'll see if I get to do it again. And if not, someone else will be awesome in it. That's Fabulous. what I say. Okay, yeah. let's do one more. And Max wants to know, favorite thing about sharing a dressing room with Kate Rockwell? Oh my God, Kate. Oh, well, I, I love her. Yeah. <laughs> I got to chat with her oh, over here. She's oh, you amazing. Did. She's yeah. so much fun. You yeah. know, we have the best time. I've known her for a long time um, through people. And so to get to like, become really close it was like so much fun for us and we just have the best time yeah because how can you not have fun doing the show right so we're constantly just hanging out listening to music eating lots of snacks okay um say so, yeah do you have any yeah. dressing room traditions <laughs> any routine dressing, we eat a lot of goldfish um that's oh like one of our gosh. go-to snacks I love goldfish. Um, yeah. we like to eat at intermission okay um our, to keep us going through the act but yeah we just we have a really nice calm, chill environment, which That's is like all you could really want when you have to go on stage and be. And then, <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely. So, yeah, it's Fantastic. Really well, Christina, thank you so much for coming by Thanks and chatting about me. Mean Girls with us. Make sure if you haven't yet, go see Mean Girls at Broadway's August Wilson Theater. Check her out. Check that incredible cast out. You'll absolutely love it. And you, please feel welcome to come back and chat with us here anytime you'd like. I would love to. You just let here. us know. Thank okay. you. <laughs> have Pete sign you up. Uh, Eric, <laughs> would, would you take us out, please? I would love to. Okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday on Facebook right here, except for on Fridays in the summer when we will not be here. Um, if you like podcasts, we've got a podcast. So you go to wherever you get those and slam that subscribe button and tune in tomorrow when we talk to Ado Blanks and Wood from The Rolling Stone.